Hello, my name is Maggie. I am a web and graphic designer from the Philadelphia area. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we go from a design or an idea for a site to an actual website. So you are all ready to build your website. Maybe you've been working in Photoshop and have your whole site laid out, or you've gathered all of your images and fonts and have a detailed sketch or you have a great idea inside of your mind ready to be built. Sometimes we get to this point and we just don't know what comes next. This can be a little bit overwhelming and may make us want to jump ship. In this video, I'm going to give you some ideas on how to proceed from your idea to your site. When we begin to build our websites, let's think about their underlying structure as being grids. The design of our websites as we build them out in HTML and CSS are informed by a grid, be it the header region, a nav section, a main banner, a footer. As we think grid, let's work with common HTML tags to define the sections of our site. Let's focus on visual hierarchy and visual continuity as we move through the different sections. We can visualize the work that we do as being similar to that of an architect. When the architect works on his or her blueprint, it serves as the guide for the design. An architect's blueprint is also informed by a grid. HTML and CSS are the tools that we use to build out the design on the underlying grid. As we move through our design process, we think visual hierarchy. We work with our grid and we organize our information on that grid. And we let visual hierarchy inform the user experience. So what are the focal points? We could begin and say our middle section is the focal point with our images. We clearly see the use of the grid and we see the use of images as well as color. What would be second? Visually, my eye goes up to our header and we see we have our type here. And again, as we take a closer look at our type, we see the difference between UI, UX, and graphic designer and what is underneath. Most likely, UI, UX, graphic designer is in an H1 tag and most likely underneath it's within a P tag. As we take a closer look at what comes next, maybe it is the footer. We could also say that our nav bar is tied with the footer. As we move through our design process, we think visual continuity. Good web design has a sense of visual cohesion and visual continuity. We can achieve this through color, type, and through adding similar sections to our site. We keep this in mind as we build our CSS. As we take a closer look at this site, we see the use of the same nav bar. We can see the same footer. And as we take a closer look, we see that we have a two column layout. And we compare the layout of Light Breakfast and Contact Info, we can see that they're stylized in very similar ways. Therefore, they share the same CSS rules, most likely. As we move along the web design process, we gather our content. Our content may be images, text, video files. As we gather our content, we make design decisions. We decide what colors we're going to use. We choose between the images that we have. We edit our text and choose typography. Moving from gathering our content, making design decisions, we add a style guide that contains our colors, our type, and other info that stylizes our site. All of this informs our HTML and our CSS as we build. Although it may be hard to believe, once you've gathered all of the content for your site, the hard work is done. Now you can build your site and let the underlying grid inform your design. Here are some ideas on how to proceed. Take it one section at a time, allowing HTML and CSS to inform the layout. As you proceed, look for the similarities and the differences as you choose your HTML and your CSS. Build your style guide and be open to change. 
this still may feel a little overwhelming. So with that in mind, why not start with the HTML5 tags to define the sections of your site? Some of these tags are header, nav, main section, footer. In doing this, we begin by taking a global view. We see we have our site to the left and to the right, we have the same site with the grid overlay. We can see we have our nav, a main banner, and from here we have sections and sections ending with a footer. You may still feel a little overwhelmed, so let's take this a step further and start writing our HTML and CSS and plan how the layout is on our grid. We see we start with our nav and with the grid that our logo is aligned left, our nav items are aligned right. Below this, we find our main banner with the image as a background on this HTML tag within the CSS, and we see our type. We see the visual hierarchy that's used within this type. We let the HTML tags tell the story of our site. We type our opening and closer header tag. Inside of our header, we add our opening and closing nav. After our nav, we add our main, giving our main the class of banner. As we build our HTML, let's think about our CSS at the same time. HTML and CSS work together. By building our CSS rules as we are adding our HTML, we'll be able to more clearly see the similarities and keep our code cleaner. So based on the HTML that I just have written, I have divided my style.css sheet into the following sections. I have a comment for universal styles, for my header, for my nav, and I've added section and footer. As I build, this will grow. This is just an initial step and a way to show you how to proceed as you begin the process of designing a website. Since I'm not going to go through a step-by-step -step procedure on how to build this website, let's take a closer look at a finished site. So we have the reference of how we begin and what it looks like when something is finished. Tortoiseshell Optics is another example of a site. For this one, we'll take a closer look at the HTML and CSS. This Tortoiseshell Optics project you can access through Codecademy's platform. We see the use of visual continuity, visual hierarchy, we can see that there is a grid that informs the layout of this site. Let's take a look at the code without getting too far into the weeds. To the right, I've taken our project and I have applied a grid and cut it up to the header, sections, and the footer. We come to our index.html and we see our header section that is containing all of the content in the header area. The nav bar, the image is set as a background, and we see we have a div for don't just look, see. We see we're using the section tag for this section with supporting as well as info. And as we move to the bottom of our index.html, we see we have our footer region. Again, letting the HTML tags inform our layout, inform our grid. Taking a closer look at our style.css, we see we have universal styles. Our universal styles could often be included in our style guide. For instance, we can see how our HTML tag is stylized with the font family, the background color, the font size, and we can come in and see all of these different rules that we have for the header area and how we've used the header comment to create this section. We see the info for our supporting section our info section, and we come down and we see the rules for our footer. As you move through the design process, stay open to change. The creative process that we enter into when we design is about taking risks and trying new things. We enter a dialogue with our design. When something doesn't work out or appear the way that we thought it would, we come up with new ideas and try another approach. And from here, we build, build, build. Over the course of this video, we looked at how we can let an underlying grid inform our layout, how we can work with HTML and CSS, 
and look for similarities in the tags and the selectors that we choose. We looked at the role of visual hierarchy and visual continuity as we build and design our sites. If you like this video, you can subscribe below. And if you'd like to bring your skills to the next level, come learn on Codecademy's platform today. Thanks so much.